Welcome back to Better Biomed. Today, I've got a little something for you guys that uh, I want to get back to some of the basics. And what I have for you is an infusion pump. It's not just an average fusion pump, it's a syringe pump. Syringe pumps are used for giving out a very specific amount of medication. Unlike feeding pumps and you know regular uh, bag infusion pumps, these ones here take a syringe. So let's take a look at the overview of an infusion pump that uses syringes, a syringe pump. I've got a couple different ones here. You can see that uh, it's got a syringe holder and it has the plunger. Okay. See how the plunger goes back and forth? Now I want you to notice that there's some ears There's some ears that retract and grab on the end of the syringe. See that? So, as you set in your set quantity, your plunger will push in a certain amount. It's very, very specific. But here's the thing. There's different sizes of syringes. How do you think a syringe pump understands what size syringe you have? We'll get into the calibration in just a little bit because we are going to calibrate this guy right here. See this? This is a diameter, a diameter detect, and it's based on a sliding resistor. And I'll send some photos and attach them so you guys can see what the sliding resistor looks like on the inside. So inside these pumps, they have a preset drug library. So based on the infusion size, the diameter of the syringe, which it can detect, uh, it will know if you're giving the correct amount of medication and what rate to squeeze the syringe based on its diameter. So if you have a little 10 cc syringe versus, let's say, a 60 cc syringe, it will know that 60 cc to push more slowly than this, the 10 cc. The 10 cc it probably will push a wee bit quicker. But these syringe pumps have a few other extra features to them. On the very back of the plunger right here, you see this rubber pad? Do you see that? Well, this rubber pad is actually a pressure sensor. So if you hit an occlusion, so let's say that you have a pinched line or that the infusion needle in the arm is starting to occlude due to um, blood coagulation or something, it senses an occlusion because as it squeezes in on the plunger, it notices a ramp up of pressure. So it immediately stops the infusion, which prevents a blowout. So let's take a look at how we would normally calibrate these. Now I'm not going to run through a calibration because, you know, legalities. But I can at least introduce you to the tools that we use to do the calibration. What I have here are a variety of calibrated diameters, and these diameters do correlate with a syringe body. So what you're actually doing is you're telling it that this is a very specific diameter, which it will save that resistance value to its internal computer. So when you load a syringe, it knows the calibrated value for that syringe. Like this one here is a 30 ml. BD syringe. We do those calibrations based on these set sizes and when we are doing the calibration we lift it up, we insert the blank and it will go through and it will set the resistive value for that size and then we we'll migrate to a different size based on you know the calibration procedure. Then we let it normalize and then we move to yet a different size. Okay, you get the, the gist of it? But there's another calibration that we're going to have to do. We're going to have to do the length of pull. So length of pull is how far out the plunger is, and it's a very set length of pull. And that's what we use this guy for. This is kind of a heavy stainless steel length of pull calibrator and what we do is we set this guy in here 
just like we would a regular syringe. We trap it right here underneath the paws. And then we do a length of pull calibration. And there's different length of pulls. Like this is the extra long one. So it calibrates the farthest out that the plunger can possibly go. So basically what you're doing is you're calibrating the home position for the plunger arm. And then we have other length of poles that we will put in, you know, based on, you know, possibly other syringes. I don't know what they're really based on. But what you're doing is you are giving it a linear value to calibrate this um, armature right here. And I'm pretty sure the way that this guy works is that there's a worm drive gear in there. So it's probably got a servo motor. So it's counting how many revolutions. And since it's a um, since it's a servo motor attached to a worm drive, it's going to be a very specific amount of revolutions for it to move, you know, let's say 20 revolutions per inch of movement. And it's going to be extremely specific. So that's all there is to it, guys. Uh, these guys do have an internal battery because obviously if you're dispersing um, a nestatent like propofol or if you are giving out uh, a, a pain painkiller drug, well, in those scenarios, you don't want this guy to just shut off because you lose power. So there is an internal battery. And mind you guys, batteries for medical devices are about every three years for replacement. So ideally, you would have a battery change sticker down here. My, my hospital does not own these. They're here on a demo. <laughs> so I won't exactly tear them apart. But underneath this cover right here, there is an internal battery. And it will allow it to stay running after the cord's unplugged. You can see when the pump boots up, it goes into a self-test and a calibration check, and then it will check the battery and do a drug library load. So whatever the latest drug library is, which is updated by pharmacy, not by us, it will go in and it will load that. So you can see that we have it set up based on the department. So NICU, we have PICU, pediatric, um, anesthesia, adult, med surge, so those are all pre-configured, so you go into those areas, hit 5, enter, and now you can see all the various types of drips, the camera picks that up, you can see all the different types of drug drips that you can enable, and that will be determined on the diameter syringe and the infusion rate, including the bolus rate, which is the initial surge of drug, that's what a bolus is, it's a preload basically of drug into the system and then from there it will give you maintenance strips which is basically a continued set value whatever you set the value at so guys that is basically it that is a syringe pump in a nutshell thanks for watching guys